so I'll be on our feet. Turn to the person around you. And um, there is a four-week series I'm embarking on, and I'm starting today. I did first some part at the first service. And this sermon or series should never, ever leave your mind. And it should ever leave your heart. This will help you to know who you are. If every child of God knows this, they will not be afraid in life again. So, the inherent power that God has given, the good news is that God never gave it to any pastor. He gave it to everybody. If it's only the pastor that when somebody is sick he can place the hand on the person for the person to be healed then the church of God and the body of Christ has failed you have the same power it's available to you as well Jesus one assignment I love in the body of Christ is for God to use me as a channel to let people know what they carry if you are the only one who is anointed you will, you will, you will, you will, you will, you will burn out tomorrow because one person you cannot do all but with the same faith and the same power something amazing will happen a young man sent a message um, just early this dawn he said man of God yesterday I ran to the altar and when I ran to the altar I came to drop a sacrifice on the altar because I didn't know that when I speak God can answer I said why he said man of God He's into oil. He does oil. He does oil lifting. He said there's um, a contract that is on the table. And he needed money to execute it. And he said every mo everywhere money has been locked. And if this contract comes through, good things will happen. But if it doesn't go through, he will lose a lot. So he says on Friday night, he was here for the um, testimony day. He said he came to the altar and prayed. And every seed he had on a pocket, he dropped it on the altar and said, God, remember me. He said, early in the morning, he said, God, let me get this money to execute this contract. Because if he does it, good things will happen to him. He said, early in the morning, around 11 a.m. yesterday, from nowhere, a friend called and a friend said, do, do you know that I owe you some money? He said, I've forgotten. The friend said, I owe you some money. And please, I'm not comfortable, not until I give you the money. Yes, Lord. Meet me in town and get the money. He said when he got the money, he nearly collapsed. He said, Papa, I ran to the altar and dropped my tithe on. I said, why did you do it for Sunday? He said, I don't want trouble with God. He said, Papa, I don't know that said that when we pray, God can just answer like that. Jesus. That, it is the, that is the realm I'm about to push you into. Yes, that when you pray, God will answer. Oh, the last to say the amen will be the first person. Uh, say, I carry God. I carry God. Say it one more time. Say, I carry God. I carry God. Say, God lives inside of me. God lives inside of me. Say, I'm a carrier of God. I'm a carrier of God. Are you ready for the sermon? Yes. You'll be blessed in the next 25 minutes. Let's go. Let's go to the book of Colossians. I'm working the book of Colossians, chapter 1 verse number 26 and we will sit down colossians chapter 1 verse number 26 then we'll sit down it says the mystery that has been hidden for ages and generations someone say ages ages say generations generations but now the mystery has been disclosed to god's people it means there was a secret and that secret, nobody knew the secret. But now, the secret has been revealed. Jesus. Pastor Daniel, what is the secret? Let's go. 26. What is the secret? To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. What is the mystery? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes, Lord. Christ in you. The hope of glory help me to speak to somebody on your left and right and say my neighbor my neighbor you know the secret you know the secret christ christ is inside of you is inside of you say my neighbor my neighbor you are a career you are a career of christ of christ you may be seated
Tell to someone to say, my neighbor. My neighbor. I'm a carrier of Christ. I'm a carrier of Christ. Say, I carry Christ. I carry Christ. Say, he's inside of me. He's inside of me. Let me give you this good news. You don't walk alone. Someone is inside of you. If your picture is taken to a wrong altar and they call out your name, Daniel, Emmanuel, Amma, Abna, Equia, Ya, it is not Daniel or Ya that will appear. Someone is already inside of me, and that is the person that has the right to appear. Yes, Lord. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus. Pastor Daniel, why did Jesus come on earth? Why? Why was he here? He didn't come here to die. If somebody tells you he came to die, it's an error. No. Why did he come? He came on earth so that you can know what you can become. So when you see Jesus, Jesus is a reflection of who, what your glorious end can be. And Jesus came on earth for you to know who God is. So Jesus is the image of the God we have never seen. He's the express image of the invisible God. Say Jesus. Jesus is the express image, is the express image of, the invisible God. of the invisible God. Man of God, come to me for an illustration. Can I get an ulcer cloth? Can I get an ulcer cloth very quick? And let me show you something. Thank you very much. So everyone from the Old Testament, this is how God had been. Anytime God is about to appear, there is tender. There is this smoke from his nostrils and no, nobody nobody could see God and everybody was afraid of God we want to see God but we cannot see him so God said but I still want to relate with people but because I'm invisible they cannot relate with me so God says he's about to transform himself into a physical being Jesus. so this is God so in order for God to transform himself into a physical being he used jesus as an image of the invisible god so that when you see jesus you have seen god that's right yes Lord. one verse 50 colossians so when i see jesus i have seen god so look at it now it says the sun is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation so jesus is the firstborn so everything that was created jesus was the beginning so if jesus was the firstborn of creation i'm the second born so now this is jesus now god wanted us to be like him but because we couldn't be like him he became like us so that we can be like him so the son of god became the son of man so that the sons of men could become the sons of god when i cannot listen when i could not be like him he became like me so that i can be like him so when i see jesus i have seen god now if i have seen jesus now where is jesus if you want to see where is where jesus is it's in first john chapter 4 verse number 14. i want you to know that you don't work alone if you get to a place and thousand people are competing with you you tell them i am different i carry something different jesus. i carry something different yes, i carry something different jesus that's when our mother first john chapter 4 verse 13 he says look at it right now that's why listen to me that's why our mother here between mother be on your feet for me between mother that's why this woman went to a funeral a family funeral when she went to the family family funeral her own cousin came to her and said, Hey, the way you are looking so beautiful, when you die, this is how you look beautiful when they are laying you in state. Then this woman, Jesus. being a powerful worship member, knowing what we carry, she looked in the face of the cousin and said, Hey, you say when I die, I will look like this. I will not die now, but you will rather die for you to be buried. Yeah. Yes, Lord. After two weeks, the cousin died. And she went to the cousin's funeral. Oh yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Jesus. Can I declare to you, Jesus. whoever wants you to fall, yes, Lord. you are a carrier.
fire of Jesus. Yes, Lord. You move in the power of Jesus. the living God. Yes, Lord. God is coming through for your destiny. Amen. Say, I carry God. I carry God. So now look at it right now. So Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Now let's go to First John 4:13. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. Who is in us? Jesus. Jesus. So if Jesus is in you, how does He come and live in you? So this, this is you, the Christian. Come. This is you, the Christian. Give me the mantle. So, this is you, the Christian. You were empty. Nothing was inside of you. But the day the Holy Spirit came on you, Jesus, He came to stay inside of you. So anytime you say, so that's what Jesus Christ said, it's better for me to leave. If I don't leave, the Spirit will not come. But He says, when the Spirit comes, you shall receive so when the spirit comes on you jesus lives in you and if jesus lives in you who is living in you god yeah. because jesus is the image of the invisible god That's right. yes. That's right. so now as a carrier of the holy spirit i don't move like daniel i'm watching i move with god i move with jesus yes, Lord. and anywhere i stand Jesus. I become a reflection yes, of Lord. what is inside. So whatever Jesus. Jesus was able to do. So someone said, Pastor Daniel, if Jesus was able to walk on water, can I walk on water? Let me tell you. Everything Jesus Christ did, it was a reflection of our current life. You and I, we don't travel on boats anymore. You and I, we don't travel on boats because Jesus, before he can move from Galilee all the way to Capernaum, he's supposed to travel on a boat. You and I, we don't have a boat. But when I'm about to travel to America, I will take a flight. And the same flight too, it jumps over the ocean. But when I sit on the flight, I say to the flight, flight, listen to me. There's no way you can crash. Because Jesus couldn't crash on the sea. I get to that realm. One day I was traveling from, I think, New York to Atlanta. Then all of a sudden, you know, the small flights in America, all the time, turbulence, gig, 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 gig. All the time, then all of a sudden, an old woman was sitting by me, screaming, Yay, yay, yay. I said, ah, I was cool, I was busy opening my phone, reading Bible. He said, Young man, why are you not afraid? And I said to the woman, I'm going to preach, and the people there are waiting for me. And God told me that He's going to bless the people. So if the flight cr- crashes, I will not go and bless them. So there's no way the flight can crash because I'm on a flight. Then I said to her, then I said to her, but if, if in any case, I want you to hold on to me. So that if in any case, if the flight crashes and everybody dies, I'll be the one to survive. Hold on to me so that you too will survive. Oh my God, Jesus, yes Lord. Yes Lord. Because I carry, t- you carry something inside of you. And today, I came to move you to that realm. I came to shift you to that realm. Nothing can stop your destiny whatsoever. Say, nothing can stop my destiny. Nothing can stop my destiny. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. And I'll give you my last part after this. 2, verse 13. So let me show you who you are, number two. Because he lives inside of you. The day Jesus died and he was buried in the grave, you died with him. And when he was resurrecting, you resurrected with him. So everything that is dead in your life is permitted to come back to life. Today, anything that was dead in your life, may it come back to life right now. Say, I am the carrier. I am the carrier of Jesus. Of Jesus. So when he was being buried, I was buried with him. And the resurrection, I resurrected with him. Say, this is my portion. This is my portion. And let's go to chapter 1, verse number 11, the NLT, and show you who you are and what you carry. Let's go. I like this one. We also pray. Give me the NIV phrase so that you know what is on there. I like the side very well. Tell me, power. Power. Let's go, say power. Power. It says, be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. So the moment he comes on me, I am strengthened, not according to vitamin C. I'm strengthened, not because of the gym I went to. I am strengthened according to the power of Jesus inside of me. 
So when I move, I don't move. I'm not a lightweight. I am a heavy duty. When you are coming as a child of God, you are like a loaded articulated track descending downhill. If anybody tries you, you will crash them. My God, Jesus. Those who didn't clap, you don't know who you are. Jesus. Say, I carry something. I carry something. Say, I carry something. I carry something. Say, I carry something. I carry something. Say, something lives inside of me. Something lives inside of me. And shout, I am powerful. I am powerful. He says, and because of, according to his glorious might. So there is a might of God. That's what we call a mighty God. Because of that, there is no way I can fall down. Sister, I want to ask you one question. Why are you afraid? Mommy, why are you afraid? Just because they threw one challenge at you, you said to yourself, that's the end of your life. Just because you went to embassy and they told you you have been refused, you said God is not there. Who told you? God is bigger than America. God is bigger than London. He holds the whole world in his hands. And when your time is up, he will push you there. Jesus, yes, Lord. We have seen crazy testimonies over here that do not make sense. One gentleman came here with the girlfriend, the fiancé. They have planned everything about to get married. Then the two of them applied for school to go and do PhD in America. So the fiancé came. She did the election and she got the visa. Do you remember the guy that was sitting over that side? Got the visa. The guy went. They didn't give to him. So I was in my office one day. I, I, I heard a knock. A sister came with a guy. I said, sister, how are you doing? Congratulations. Sister was not happy. I said, why? So, Papa, I'm the one you prayed for because she was doing um, teaching assistant job at the University of Cape Coast. And I gave her a promise that you go and do PhD, you become a Sorry. lecturer, you have your Sorry. doctorate, you, you teach in America. Papa, I'm the one. I'm going. I said, Great. I said, Why are you not smiling? He said, This is my boyfriend. I said, When I was giving the prophecy, was he here? She said, No. I said, Why is he? He said, Oh, he doesn't like prayers and everything. And I said, So, what was it? He said, But the two of us went. He, he didn't get. I got. I look at the guy. Bem, I am ready. That's why. That's why. I said, Bro, you don't want to go. He said, Prophet, I want to go now. I said, why? I said, maybe when she goes, she will not come and pick me. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Do I remember? Yes, sir. Yes. I think Islam can even give me the interface. If, if, if Islam is there, she can look for that. That's the guy. Sorry. That's the guy. Then I look at the guy. I said to the guy, I said to the guy, God is not two. That's right. God is not three. That's he right. is one. If he did for your fiancé, my God, my God. he will do it for you. Amen. You can go in the video when I was, yeah. So I was prophesying to the guy. That's when I prophesied to the guy and I said, I, I told him, open your hands. I said, I give you your visa. That's right. I told him, go and apply again. He said, prophet, if you, they refuse you, it's supposed to take some time. I said, I'm telling you, go and apply again. That's right. He went to apply. When he got to the embassy, they took his document. The officer said, ah, you were here last month. You were being refused. Why are you here again? I said, why not? Why not? face he to look at the face oh then he took the mantle give me mantle. my mantle he took the mantle the mantle is in his pocket he hold, held it and said let this mantle represent the altar Jesus. let this mantle represent yes, the Lord. altar yes, Lord. the officer looked at his face and said last month you were here you're not supposed to be here but i don't know you have been approved Amen. yes lord yes lord yes, uh, as lord. i'm talking right yes, now the brother has gone to america He's studying his PhD by the grace of God. Amen. Take it off. Now, let me give you good news. What am I trying to tell you? I want you to know that when they deny you, don't give up. Yes, Lord. When they deny you, tell them, Jesus. I am different. I Amen. will do it again. Amen. Say, I will do it again. I will do it again. Let's go back to my test. Let's go verse number 12. Verse number 12. Verse number 12, verse number 12. Let's go. The verse number 12. Yeah. It says, um, um, give me the NLT version on the side. And I like the side. He says, always thanking the father who has enabled you to say in his inheritance. You are moving in inheritance. Right. And the same verse 12, give me the message version and look at it right now. I want you to move here with something that was on your life. That will be so glorious. Message Bible. That will be so glorious. By the mercies of the living God. He says, look at it now. He says, thanking the father who has made them strong enough. Why are you strong enough? Because he lives inside of you. That's right. Wherever you are, lift up your two hands. Yes, Lord. And put your hand down. 
and say, I am strong. I am strong. I can't feel powerful. So I can't feel second service. I can't feel. I say, I'm, I'm strong. I am strong. Are you sure you are strong? Yes. If you are strong, then let me tell you. Sickness has no part in your destiny. Amen. Any yes, sickness Lord. waiting for you tomorrow. Jesus. I go in advance and I stop it right now. Jesus. Sound, I am strong. I am strong. Elbow the person by elbow the person by you and say, I am strong. I am strong. Say, I am yes, strong. Lord. I am strong. Jesus. And this is the kind of life when he lives in you. This is the kind of life he brings to you. And I like it that way. He's oh, I, li- I like it so very much. Can, can, can I show you? He says to take part in everything bright and beautiful he has for us. My God. There is a bright and a beautiful life. Yes, sir. If today you, you are in a part of life that is ugly, don't worry. There is a bright and a beautiful life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And hear me, I'm not talking to you about a beautiful and a bright li- life. I'm talking to you about a bright and a beautiful life future yes lord jesus and sorry sorry i'm sorry that i didn't tell you the truth i'm not talking just about a bright and a beautiful future your future is not 10 years time your future is not 2025 yes lord your future is not at the election time yes lord. your future is in the next one minute it's your future yes, lord. so i declare by fire a bright yes, and a beautiful lord. future jesus i receive it whatever you are you can take a screenshot of the scripture take a yes, screenshot lord, of the scripture it. put it on your profile Take a screenshot of the scripture. Put it on your profile, everyone. A bright and a beautiful future. Tell the person around you, have a bright future. Oh, is, that, is that how you say, bright? I have a bright future. I have a bright future. Say, I have a bright future. I have a bright future. Say, I have a bright future. I have a bright future. Say, my future is bright. My future is bright. Oh my God. So the moment he lives in me. I get a bright life. I get a beautiful life. What is making your life ugly? It means when anything tries to make my life ugly, because of the Jesus in me, I've got to cancel it. There is a beautiful life for you. There is a bright life for you. Yes, Lord. See, a bright life. A bright life. A beautiful life. A beautiful life. Give me verse 13. Let's go. I have five minutes to finish with you. Oh, I like, I like this. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. So at first I was in darkness. But somewhere, somehow, he rescued us. And now he has brought us into a new kingdom. Now the kingdom is not heaven. The kingdom is the dominion of Jesus. He has rescued me. He has rescued me from darkness. From darkness. Can I tell you something about darkness? Can I tell you? Let's say this is what you are looking for in life. This is your contract, your money, your marriage, your children, your favor, and everything. Let me tell you something ugly about darkness. Can I tell you? Yeah. Um, media, turn off all the lights. This light. Don't turn the front one. Turn on the lights. Let's do something right now. Yeah. Oh, turn all the lights. Oh, turn off. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Perfect. Have you seen the darkness that has happened? Maybe you are looking for this water. The water can be with you here. But because of darkness, you end up looking for it over here. Although you are standing by the water, because of darkness, you cannot see. Jesus. So people walking in darkness, they are close to their miracles, but they can't touch right. it. Right. So he rescued us from darkness and bring yeah. back to life. And he has moved us into Light. Oh, I come to you. Back to life, man. Yes, Lord. I say, he has rescued us from darkness and moved us back into light. Of his son, he loves. That's right. So the reason why when you meet God, things have to change because when the darkness moves away, what I was looking for, I don't go far. It will be standing by me. And today, your light has come back on. The last who say the enemy will be the first one. My light has come back on. My light has come back on. And let's go to the last verse. Jesus. And I'll be done with you. The last verse. Let's go. The, la- the last verse. The last verse in the message Bible. Let's go. The last verse in the message Bible. Look at it now. It says, The son who got us out of the pit we were in. Let's all read together. Let's go. 
the son who got us out of the pit we were in. Who, who got you out of the pit? The son. Who? The son. Who is the son? Jesus. Where is Jesus now? He's, Where is Jesus now? He's inside me. So if he's in you, he has taken you out of the pit. So what's the meaning? It means when I get to a place and somebody is digging my grave, Jesus pushes me out. He doesn't end there. But the person taking the grave, he rather. My God. Jesus. But this is, this is where the catch is. He got rid of the sins who were doomed to keep repeating. Can I explain to you? That's right. Because Jesus is in you, yes, stop Lord. repeating that sin. There is a particular sin you keep on repeating. You don't like that sin, but always you are repeating. But Paul's letter to the Colossian church says, you, we were doomed of repeating, but he will help us. Man. Listen, that Jesus. sin that you are repeating, today because Jesus is in you, yes, right. stop repeating. Amen. Yes, Lord. Because right now, listen to me, Jesus is in you, and you are doing that sin. So you are doing the sin with Jesus. My God, my God. Oh, 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 So if Jesus in you, imagine you are doing this sin and Jesus is standing, Jesus in you. Into who we are, the in the real. Sister, 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 sister. Tell the person around you, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with you. Don't disgrace him. Don't disgrace him. Because when trouble oh, yeah. comes, he's the one you will call. But right now, only in the real, the boom. Then I could see a corner or can see you. It's inside of you. Say, my neighbor, my neighbor, stop repeating it. Stop repeating it. The day you went to disgrace your friend, Jesus was there. My God, my God. The day you intentionally gossip about your neighbor, who turned to turn or so, but it was not true. Jesus was inside of you. So, right now, hear me. Having known this secret, if Jesus is in you and you keep on repeating and he doesn't like what you are doing, what will happen? He will. My God, my God, my God. Do you want Jesus to leave you? Do you want him to stay with you? Yes. Then stop repeating that sin. Say, my neighbor. My neighbor. The last night sin. The last night sin. Stop repeating it. Stop repeating it. See the last night one. The last night one. The Friday night one. The Friday night one. The Valentine Day one. The Valentine Day one. Stop repeating it. Stop repeating it. If the person by you didn't smile, they are suspects. <laughs> Clap your hands and bless God. See, I carry Jesus. I carry Jesus. Give me two verse ten. Give me two verse ten. The book of Colossians really shows you who you are. Who you are. And, and now, no, no, let, let me end this one. Let me end this one. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Look at it. So you are complete through your union with Christ. So now, because Jesus is the image of the invisible God, because of him, I am complete. And because I am complete, because my house has not come, you can't laugh at me. That's right. Because I am complete in him. He will bring me my house. Amen. Because my car has not come. I am Jesus. complete. My car. Because my marriage has not come. Because you have married for 10 years and no child has come. Don't worry at all. You are completing him. The child will come. come. Yes, Lord. And look at it. Because he lives in you, you don't only become complete. Now, Jesus is the head of every ruler and authority. So the principality ruler in your family house, their headmaster is Jesus. Amen. Into Obia on the master. Right. So oh yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Check, check this, check this. Jesus is the head of every ruler and authority. Rulers and authority, they are um, they are top people. I'm saying the truth. That's right. But even although they are rulers and authority, they have their head. So the head which in your family, who is their head? Who is your head? Jesus. And where is he? Beyond your feet. My God. My God. So if the head of the witches, their leader, yes, you are, yes, Lord. and Jesus is in you, you are also their head. 
But oh, I can't feel you. Slow. That's why one day, let me tell you this secret. That's why one day I preach a sermon like this and I say, whoever is connected to this altar, which is a loser can never fight you. Then there was a brother in this church. He said, prophet, there is an uncle in the family. When you go for funeral and, and you, are, you mistake and say the uncle's hand, by the time you come back to Accra, you are in trouble. So when I preached that sermon and he had his mantle, he said, ah, be be a he went to the funeral. When they were greeting, he greeted the uncle. When he greeted the uncle, one of the cousins said, Hey, Charlie, have you forgotten? He said, forget about it. He sat down. Then the uncle walked to me and said, Hey, do you know that you greeted me? You know nobody can greet me. He said, uncle, yeah, I greeted you. I'm not afraid, uncle. The uncle said, really? Two minutes, he called me on the phone. He said, Papa, ma, 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 Papa, ma, 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 Papa, I bring you to... I said, what? He said, I greeted... I said, forget about it. Don't worry at all. Three days after, the uncle got stroke. One week, the uncle has died. Slow. Can Jesus. I declare to you? Jesus. Jesus is the head of every ruler. Yes, Lord. And he lives over here. So you are also the head of all those riches and Amen. the wizards. I permit you to become great. Amen. One prayer, lift up your hands.